Hi, BHS. I'm Brenna, and this is Chris, and here is your news for today. BHS counselors will be hosting a pizza party for seniors on December 13th during fifth period, so in the library to learn about available scholarships. Check your email for the registration link. You must be registered to attend. See Mrs. Gamori with questions. Now on to the weekly recap with Jesse. Hey, Bucks. Jesse here with your weekly recap. The boys' basketball team had their first game of the season on December 1st against Harlem. They took a tough loss, 75-77. to The girls' basketball team also took a tough loss against Harlem on November 30th. BHS kicked off the annual winter cheer dress-up days on December 2nd. If you have any sweatshirts, sweaters, sweatpants, hats, mittens, gloves, etc., please donate them to room 45 for Miss Carly's shelter. Now back to you, Chris and Bryn. Go Bucks! Thanks, Jesse, for the recap. That's all the news for this week. Now, now on to our special, special segments. segments. Hey, folks, I'm here with Ms. Chomko and Mrs. Rapp, and they are the Culinary Club Advisors. So what is Culinary Club all about? It is a club that anyone can join any age level. They can just come and have fun uh, cooking after school. We try all new recipes, all new things, and it's kind of fun if you can't get a foods class on your schedule that you can kind of try something uh, fun after school. Cool. Yeah. Especially if you're not, if maybe if you don't have uh, the experience at home and you want to start cooking a little earlier before class. So it's exciting. So how would they go about talking to you or joining? I would say usually people just like stop by one of our rooms, they hear it by word of mouth, or I have a lot of Foods One classes that will just like ask me about it in class, um, or people just hear it through word of mouth, they'll stop down by one of our rooms and join the remind code that we have going so they can just join the remind and they'll get all the alerts about the notifications when the meetings will be. And we can give that to you if you'd like to add it. Yeah, of course. And so do you have any plans coming up? Any activities for the club? Um, so we meet uh, pretty much twice a month, Thursdays, and we try to switch up the recipes. We will do one savory, one sweet. This time we're doing a sweet recipe coming up uh, this Thursday, actually, right after mm -hmm. school in Miss Chomko's room, 116. Um, and we are doing chocolate uh, peppermint cookies. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Go Bucks. Hi, BHS. I'm here with Jesse Moyer, and he is a part of Culinary Club. So why did you decide to join Culinary Club? Well, my freshman year, I, would, I had Ms. Chomko in my last hour, and she told me to stay after school. So I did. Oh. I made food. That's awesome. So what have you learned since joining? Cooking, like how to cook better and like different dishes to make, like desserts and yeah. entrees and stuff. Fun. So why do you think students should join? It's just a good place to like meet new friends and eat food and like make the food and learn new things about cooking if you haven't taken a food class before. Awesome. Thanks, Jesse. Yeah. Hi, folks. I'm here with Miss Fisher, and she is the agriculture teacher here at BHS, and she is also the club advisor for FFA. So what does FFA stand for? FFA actually does not stand for anything. It used to stand for Future Farmers of America, but back in the 1980s, we actually changed it to just the National FFA Organization because most people don't come from the farm, and we are a more diverse group just promoting agriculture and where our food comes from. Awesome. So what is it all about? It is about leadership, scholarship, and career developments. We have a lot of career development events that offer opportunities for high school students to get one-on-one -on -one interactions with different careers they might be interested in, especially because here in Illinois, one in four jobs are related to the agricultural industry. Yeah, so um, what grade levels are involved? It's all four grade levels, so freshman through senior. On top of it, um, FFA also uh, has a discovery program where both 7th uh, and 8th graders can get involved and then you can, after you graduate, join the alumni and be a member for a lifetime. Awesome! So how would students go about joining? Uh, honestly, they just need to sign up to our Remind Tech. So right outside the Ag Room, Room 106, we have our FFA board with our Remind Text on it. Um, you can send me an email at afisher at district100.com and just start showing up. There's opportunities for everyone and we welcome all. Awesome. So what is the next activity you guys are doing as a club? Oh, 
fantastic question. <laughs> On top of our chapter meeting next week, we actually have our section holiday party. So this year we are so lucky to have the section president. So the section is comprised of um, multiple schools in our surrounding area, including North Boone, Marengo, Sycamore, DeKalb. And we have the section president of all those schools, Alice and Aves. So we get to host the section holiday party. It's a really good time to uh, meet people, to get to see what FFA is all about, um, build gingerbread houses. And we also uh, run some of those contests during it, like the job interview contest. Awesome, sounds great. Thanks, Bucks. All right, and I'm here with Allison Aves, and she is the chapter FFA leader and the president of FFA, right? Yes, ma'am. All right, cool. Yeah. So why did you decide to join FFA? Um, I, for my freshman year, I knew I was going to join FFA because I kind of, I grew up in agriculture. I live on a dairy farm. Um, so I would, I'm what you would call um, conventionally yeah. agriculturally based. But I think the main reason that I joined FFA is because I seen um, high achieving peers in FFA before I entered high school and I knew exactly that I wanted to follow in their footsteps. I wanted to make those connections and I just wanted to be around like the positive community and environment that FFA holds. Yeah, that's awesome. So yeah. what have you learned since joining? Um, FFA, I think it has a funny way of connecting you with so many other people. I've been able to go to national competitions. I've been able to participate in state level contests and just meet and interact with kids from around the state and just shown like the true kindness of humanity in one small student organ, one large student organization. Yeah. Um, and then I've also participated in many contests within FFA. There's contests like the job interview contest. There's prepared public speaking. Um, to dairy foods judging. There's so many different opportunities within FFA and it just kind of shows you the scope of agriculture but also like the kindness of humanity in a weird way. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So why do you think students should join FFA? Um, kind of based, kind of restating what I've said before. It's just a really positive and great community to be a part of. Um, there are so many opportunities within the contest. Um, personally, I have a supervised agricultural experience where I've been able to track my progress throughout high school, whether that's my community service project, the contest that I stated previously, or my own at-home project with my dairy cattle. Or and, um, and there's a wide variety of things. You don't have to be conventionally agriculturally based to have a project in FFA um, because it's more than just agriculture. It's about um, making connections and making you um, better to have a career in the future. There's also a lot of scholarships that yeah. can be found in FFA and it's a great organization to be a part of. Awesome, thank you. <sighs> oh, Gwendolyn, how I missed you on these Arctic peaks. Years ago, we would sit here on this mountaintop and fight off cougars and such. And then your father came. He took you away from me. Oh, Gwendolyn, these cougars are sassy, but none quite like you. Oh, Gwendolyn, return to me when you can. Yours truly, Billy Bob the Third. again. I don't know why you keep sending me this. It's been a couple years now. Dude. I'm, I'm just an accountant. You know, I've got a family. I don't remember any cougars. There were no cougars. I don't know if you have the wrong number. You're just doing this to mess with me or something. I, I honestly don't know. It's been years. It was my grandma's birthday last year and you showed up with a thing of flowers and you start speaking like Shakespeare or something. I just don't know, man. It's just like, please, I just someone else, anyone but me. Signed, John Smith. Well, I mean, John Smith, through these years of correspondence, I've learned many things. One of which being, we are in love. Yes, John Smith, we are in love. Twas meant to be, twas meant to be. Here's my proof, John. One day, I was cloud watching, writing a letter, and I saw in the sky, a puppy cotton ball. 
in the shape of a chain. If that is not proof that our love is true, I don't know what is, John Smith. Whoever yours, Billy Bob the Third. Dear Billy Bob the Third, I, that's lovely. I'm glad you saw those clouds. I'm glad you're getting outside. You know, I'm, I'm proud of you. All right. Maybe you know you got some family members you want to talk to. You know, anyone but a middle-aged man who has lower minimum wage income. You know, um, just like please. No more. I, I get your chocolates. I get your giant ice statues of yourself holding a skull in your hand. Please, no more. I just, I don't think I can take it. My wife, she's concerned. She sees the locks of hair you leave on my bed. It's just, it's too much. Me and my kids, we're moving to Arizona next month. You know, I just thought I'd let you know. You might be a little devastated. Please do not follow me. Yours truly, John Smith. Want me to attach some family photo just for proof? I don't know? want them having them. <laughs> oh, John Smith, this shall be my last letter. Now I see, John Smith, what the real issue was. You're married. John Smith, through the subtext of your letter, I can presume that you want a divorce. Subtext? So you can marry me. Yes, John Smith, all is clear now. I know your true feelings. You see, you say, stop texting me. Stop bothering me. What you really meant, John Smith, was that you loved me. I'm and I love you too. Right there, buddy. I'm not even writing anymore. You are insane. And I love you too. Stop. In your dreams, Billy Bob the Third. I need a new job. Hey, hey uh, uh, someone's on the side of the road. Uh, do I have to? It'd be, oh, he's coming in by himself. Excuse me. What the? Can I get in? Well, you already opened the door. Come into my car, whatever you want, yeah! So is the door up? Uh, it's, it's freezing out there, man. Is it? Is it really? Well, it's, 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 it's a Midwestern winter, so... It's, it's, you don't know what I've been through. You know, oh, well, I, was, I was walking over here. I just got, just got to know key on. Those things are infinite, man. I just, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sweet, sorry. The Swedish people, it's, you know, they're always... Sir, 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 sir. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull over real quick. You went to Ikea willingly? I, I just woke up, and I was, I was just in there, and I, I saw I saw furniture as far as I could see, and the Swedish people, they, they kept saying, sir, are you all right? I just, they just, I can't talk about it. What's your name? John, John Smith. Oh. Uh, Billy Bob, uh, Billy Bob the Third. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Swedish name, isn't it? No. I don't believe so, no. It sounds pretty Swedish to me. How Does do you feel it? about meatballs? How do you feel about furniture? Can you build that furniture? Do you have enough parts for that furniture? Are you missing a few? Where yes. are you taking me? Where do you want to go? Where do you want to go? Is that Ikea? You know what? Yeah, it is Ikea. We're pulling into the car. Ah! Ah! Yeah, ah! yeah, get out of my car and stay out. I'm never picking up a hitchhiker again. No! We're going away! Stay away! Okay. Um, so what you just saw were uh, two uh, excerpts from our uh, upcoming show on December 10th at 5 o'clock. Um, those shows were first off Love Letter and Hitchhiker. If you want to see more, like I said, come over uh, December 10th. That's next Friday. Um, Tickets are two bucks. Two bucks. And uh, free with an ID. There you go.
guys, I'm Sophia. I'm here with Marco Bykowski from our bowling team here. And how did you get involved in bowling here at BHS? Uh, my family has a lot of bowlers in it. My brother was a bowler, my dad was a bowler, and all my different cousins. So I just kind of wanted to you know, try it out, see how it was. Yeah, I find a way to get involved here at BHS. It's nice. And how's the season going so far? Um, it's going really well. Our overall team, like, we are doing so good. Our JV team is popping off, our varsity team is popping off. I think we have a really good chance of staying this year. Yeah, it's really good, especially with being your last season and as a senior here. And how do you feel about that? Um, it's definitely sad. I was never the uh, greatest bowler on the team, but you know, I'm still gonna miss you know, going to all the meets, going to all the tournaments, doing all the stuff with the team. It's definitely sad, but I think we're leaving the team in pretty capable hands. Yeah, really bonding and all that, just the atmosphere of the team. And thank you for this interview, Bill Bucks.